Lorena. Thank you. Um, so, hi everybody. I'm gonna talk to you today about the good and the ugly side of uh, SOCMIN forensics. But um, first I'm gonna tell you who I am. <laughs> so I work as a digital forensics investigator at uh, the Forensic Services Lab at PwC. I work mostly with digital investigations and with intelligence. And that was my cat. And so let me just run through it. <laughs> Uh, so what is SOCMIN forensics? First you have um, SOCMIN, which is a subset of OSINT, which is open source intelligence. It is the process of um, identifying, collecting, and exploiting data from social media platforms. And then on the other side, you have forensics, which is kind of like the same thing, but you're applying sci scientific uh, techniques for collecting data from um, to uncover a crime, right? And I do think it is one of the coolest um, sciences. But when you put these two together, you get social media forensics. And well, I'm sorry, social media intelligence forensics, which is the co collecting evidence from social media platforms that can and will be used in court. In fact, I brought you some examples. These two individuals here, they went to jail because they thought, well, publishing, uh, posting really terrible things on Twitter was not gonna be a problem. Um, I believe this one was uh, some sort of um, death threats and the other one just horrible stuff. And uh, then you have, this is an actual case between two people that they were saying also demeaning things on Twitter. And then you have the case of the Netherlands most wanted criminal. This individual um, was a suspect for murder. So he decided to just flee the Netherlands and go to his home country. Um, somewhere in the Middle East, and when he decided, when he realized that he was being very sm like smarter than the police, he decided to start posting pictures of himself on social media, and taunting the police in the Netherlands. So um, it was like here outside my house, here on the beach, here at a very famous mall. So the police asked people around uh, the Netherlands to see if they could help them out, and yeah, they figured out where he was um, saying. So he went back to the Netherlands to face charges. And then you have ISIS that are using social media to um, um, gather more people, like to join them. Because for example, if you just grab Twitter, you can post things and nobody has to commit to follow you to be able to read them. So that is the way that ISIS is doing it. And uh, then you also have a lot of weapons on Facebook. I don't know why, but that's a, it's a big issue. But I know I told you about all those examples, uh, you know, on the other side of the phone. But what is happening here in, Nos in Norway? In this beautiful country of over five million people, if you just grab everybody who's sick from 16 years old to 79 years old, 80% of those are using at least one social media. And I'm pretty sure uh, most of us here are. Um, for my thesis, because I just finished school like this summer, I decided to collect about, like to have a data set of about 5,000 people. And from those 5,000 people, I find out that 3,367 3, um, profiles had some sort of sensitive data that they were sharing to the public, to everybody. I've seen, um, I'll go more into detail about what I've seen. Let's see. Yes, I'm good with that. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, if you don't understand anything I'm saying. Um, but I'm going to just grab an example just to kind of show you what you can, what is social media intelligence. And I grab a random person from Oslo, I guess it's not so random if we're not from, it's from Oslo. They're over the age of 18, for this example. Uh, they're an active user, I make sure that they were using um, social media within the last 12 months. And they're, it's an open profile, you know, like you, you can just go through the friends and everything. And they have shared some sort of personal sensitive data. But for this example, I'm not gonna go in too much into detail for that because Maybe you're sitting here, who knows? <laughs> so we have a target, that will be your target, and we have this question. So we're just gonna go with the lowest thing. We're gonna find out where this person has been the last year. So you have a profile, obviously I have blocked the important stuff. Um, and on the title you usually have a username. And we don't only reuse passwords, we also reuse usernames. So once you have a username, 
you are probably going to be able to find not only Facebook, but also Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and even email accounts that they don't use anymore. So then you go to a data breach uh, website and then you have their password and it, if you want to go into detail. But um, only from seeing their Facebook page, you get to see, okay, so you get, have their picture, right? And uh, you're able to find, um, so you have an age approximation, um, you have facial details. I like to focus a lot on the ears and the hairlines because those things don't really change because hairstyles and things like that do. Also, uh, people that wear necklaces, they have the tendency to wear them in different other, in other pictures, so you're able to tell who they are. This is not science. <laughs> this is just kind of like from working on this for a while. Well, for a while, a year. <laughs> and then you have this person has decided to give us way more information about themselves. So now I have graduation year, so I can further estimate their age. I have where they have worked, where they have studied. I have their hometown, so I'm literally making a different profile of this picture of this person only based on the data that they're giving us. So, and I let the Oslo part so you all get to see that. And then friends and family. I have dealt with people that have very little in the profile media. In fact, they only have a name and things like that. But once you find their parents, you have everything because you were, completely sure that you're gonna find a mom saying, oh, 25 years ago, I gave birth to this beautiful baby. And then you're like, oh, great, now I have your birthday, now I have who's your mom, and I'm gonna see all more pictures of yourself because our parents are not really good with social media. And then this person also share a bunch of other selfies. So I have way more angles of their face. If I wanted to, I could make a 360 picture of, themself, of them. So it is, I mean, this person had, just giving me everything that I need. Next, um, if you only focus on this part, you have these likes, likes, um, political views, and all those stuff. So the more you scroll, the more you get to see the person. And But for this example, we're just gonna focus on that picture. And it is this one. And when you see that picture, you're gonna tell me, yeah, well, there are a bunch of things that I can identify. And yes, that's what I pretty much do. I look, well, there's text, and there's text that I understand. And there, we, we see it's a train station. We see that, I'm gonna just point, point it out. Let's see. We see that little weird looking ceiling. We have um, yeah, the trains, the light poles. And we also have people. And you get to see the sky, so it's clear-ish. And the people in the picture are telling you more than you may realize. So they're wearing, most of them are wearing t-shirts and shorts meaning that you can pretty much tell what season it is. Well, hoping that it's Europe or well. Yeah, because if it was South Europe, then it's gonna be warm all the time. But anyway, <laughs> so once I have that picture and I need to figure out where this person has been only from that picture, I'll grab the first, uh, the most important part, which is the text because that I'm, I'm gonna be able to see it somewhere else. Oh, that wasn't, that was me, <laughs> whoops. Um, so I do some Googling and I uh, just find out that this is found on Wiki Commons. And I'm like, oh, great, right? Um, so it's the same place. The picture was taken in 2008. My picture was take, well, uploaded on 2019. Well, not my picture, but the, the target's picture. And um, it makes sense because nine years, nine years, I think. Nine years later, I, it makes sense that um, a lot of graffiti is on the picture. But if you were to ask me, are you 100% sure that this picture was taken there? I will not tell you 100%. Mostly because if you realize this little bench over here is not on that picture, there are different type of chairs. Yes, it could have changed, but I'm still not gonna say 100% that it's the same place. And also, for example, that corner right next to the name, um, in this one, it ends right next to the corner. Here it doesn't. So I'm on the same area, but I won't be, ta be able to tell you that the picture was taken here. Then I also find out that, yeah, it's Romania because of the place. It's a train station. So I go into Google Maps, and I forgot to tell you that this was just going to be used with, we're going to be using everyday tools, nothing fancy. So it's a little more scary. I go into Google Maps, then I'm able to fi find out that yes, I am in the right area. Most likely this picture was taken here because of that bench. 
then I also get to see that there's a train in the back there and on Google Maps also they're showing a train on the side, which I think is kind of cool that they were taking around the same time-ish. Also the sky, I didn't realize that. Okay. And, uh, but I am still missing a couple of things. For example, this one is a yellow um, thing <laughs> that I don't have on Google Maps. So most likely I'm just a little too forward on that one. But now I will be able to tell you that it's 95% sure. Won't do 100% because I'm not there to confirm it. But so from all those profiles that I collected from my thesis, it showed me that you get to see more information that you that the user is intended to show you. I've seen, um, yeah, I've seen an Excel sheet of people with their full names and how much they were making that year. I've seen a uh, password, obviously. People love to put their passwords on not stick and like little post-its. I've seen flight reservations with their code, with their booking number, and you may say, yeah, well, what's the big deal? I, if I have your last name and if I have your booking code, I can just go online and cancel your flight, which is terrible. But people don't realize that they're posting all this information. And um, I've seen a lot of videos of people's houses, and they don't also realize that I'm, what I'm seeing, I can just pause and see, point out a very interesting things. And the usual location timestamps from applications like Instagram and Twitter. So yeah, some those are some of the examples. This person was complaining about their the postum, and they posted the picture. They were saying horrible things about the owners of the house, but they even gave you the location of where the house was. So those are things that you get to see. So now I'm gonna go to the uh, the side, the good and the ugly side. The thing is that it is the same side. Um, this is. This is great for my job. This is great for my thesis. It's great for me. I think it's awesome that people are sharing so much information on social media because I'm able to exploit it. Um, it's great also for, in general, social media forensics because uh, intelligent forensics because we are able to use that not for everyday people like us, but criminals. However, I'm also a user of social media, and uh, I know that it's not only being misused by good people. Well, or used by good people, but it's also being used by bad guys. And it is, it is, it put me in a situation where it's like I want more people to share data, but I'm also a user, and it's very scary. So it is, it is all about we create so much data, but is it for better or for worse? So okay, so now you can all go home with something that you have learned. You, I, my thesis pretty much ended with saying, people, please don't share so much information. I have talked to people and they say, yeah, but I wanna use hashtags. And I'm like, okay, so you're willing to sh give away your privacy just for the use of hashtags? And they say, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, uh, you, 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 what can you do after, after that? So I like to, usually this is something that I have talked a lot with my friends and I'm like, okay, let me show you what I can get from your social media. And they go like, okay, I'll start doing that. So, um, but kind of like a thumb rule will be that if you're not willing to post it publicly on a wall, maybe you shouldn't post it. So think about that before you post on social media. I'm pretty sure we're all here amazing at it, but share it with people around you because um, it's scary. And that's all. I think I went really fast. <laughs>